guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to create an ombre effect using my Swiss meringue buttercream. This is a really popular buttercream technique, so I'm gonna show you the best way to achieve it. I've done this quite a lot in the past and I've uploaded photos of it on Instagram and realized I've never actually done a YouTube tutorial about it, so here it is. As you can see, to start off, I've already got a crumb coated six inch cake here, which has been chilling in the fridge, so it's nice and firm and ready for the second coating. And what I've also done is prepared some of my Swiss meringue buttercream. And as you can see, I have left it white because I'm going to color it. So while I prepare my buttercream, I'm just gonna move the cake to the side and show you the best way to color. Now I've seen lots of different techniques to create an ombre effect, and I've tried many techniques and I think I've nailed the most effective. It's not necessarily the easiest and it is a bit long, the process, but um, I really believe this is the way that you get this really nice gradient of color from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom, whatever way round you're doing it. Some people like to go from dark to light, either way round. Um, I'm gonna go from dark to light. I like coloring the first bit of color as dark as possible and then adding white. So rather than adding color to make the buttercream darker, I actually do it the opposite way and I'll show you how. So I'm going to start off with just a couple of spoons of white buttercream. So it doesn't look like a lot, but this is all you need to start off with. This may even be too much. And I've decided to go for a purple. We're getting into autumn now, so you know, I'm thinking a little bit autumnal colors. Step away from the pink. And I'm using the Grape Violet gel food coloring here. And as you can see, I'm going in with quite a generous amount, which I don't usually do with buttercream, but I do want the darkest shade possible. And I'm going to mix that in. Now with purple, it does depend on what brand you're using, but sometimes it needs a touch of pink or blue just to really bring out the purple color. So usually I actually add a little bit of pink to my purple, but because I've gone in with so much color, a really good shade of purple has formed. So I'm happy to start off with this and leave it as it is. And what I'm going to do now is fill up a piping bag with this purple. What you can also see is that when you mix in color, it really knocks out the air bubbles. So just a tip for cake decorating in general, if you are using the Swiss meringue buttercream and you're finding it has lots of air bubbles in, just give it a mix by hand before you apply it to the cake. So it's important to keep this bowl and you'll see why in a minute. And snip off the end of the piping bag. So already you may have seen techniques where people already shade the colors and put them into lots of different piping bags. So my technique not only saves a load of bowls, um, it also saves some piping bags because we're going to be reusing this. So I'm going to get my cake back and then what I'm going to do, just like I would do if I was doing a striped cake, is pipe a layer of this purple buttercream at the bottom. So again, I'm starting with the darkest shade and working my way up. So I'm going to pipe against the cake and it's quite a thick layer that goes on. I'm going with one layer all the way round and I'm just going to double that layer. And that's it for this shade. So you can see that I do have quite a lot of purple still in there, so it was more than enough. Move the cake to the side. And now I'm going to empty the piping bag into the same bowl that I colored it and add a little bit of white into that purple. So I'm going with about a tablespoon at a time. And this is going to lighten that shade of purple. So it may not look like a big difference, but the whole idea is that you want this gradual change in shade. So that's why I'm gonna go in bit by bit with the white. And all I'm gonna do is fill up the same piping bag. Doesn't matter if there's still leftover of the other color because it's all gonna to blend together. And do the exact same thing. So go around the cake with a layer of this shade. And then once again, empty this piping bag and add the white. 
So you can see this is where the process becomes a little bit long, but trust me, it was totally worth it. So now I can definitely see that this shade of purple is lighter than the one that I started off with. Back in the same piping bag. Back into the bowl. And so I'm basically going to repeat this until I get to just above the top of the cake because I want the last layer to be white. So as I go up the cake, the shades of purple are slowly going to get lighter and lighter and then the top layer is going to be white. So this is the last layer of the purple and as you can see it's a lot lighter than we started off with. Now just remember to leave enough white for not just around the cake but on the top as well. And you can also see that because I've been adding white every time, the piping bag has stayed full the whole way. So this is the last layer, so I'm going to leave that gap at the top for the white. And I don't need the piping bag anymore. So I've got some leftover purple, which I might just add to the decoration. And here is the white. Now because the white's been sitting, it's got a little bit air bubbly, so I'm going to just give it a mix before I spread it on the cake. That's a lot smoother. So if you do want, you can go around the top with another piping bag with the white. You don't want to refill the old one because that still has residue of the purple or whatever colour you're using. I just like to spoon on the white directly. And then from there, just spread out the buttercream as I would usually do on a cake. So as usual, I've pushed that buttercream over the edge of the cake and now I can use that to kind of fill in that top gap that I left. So for me, I don't need to go around with a piping bag. And it doesn't matter if it blends into the colour beneath because what we're going to do next is exactly that. So I'm just going to give my palette knife a little clean. So basically, if you start scraping this, you'll get these lines, um, which can look nice, but to avoid it, you actually want to blend the layers. So using the back of my palette knife, I'm just almost going to go up and down in between the layers and really blend them together. So this helps avoid getting those lines around the cake, dividing the shades of color. So it kind of looks like you're ruining everything you just spent a long time doing but don't worry, it won't be ruined. So I'm just going to work my way up the cake, going up and down using my palette knife. But I am sticking to layer by layer because I still want that separation of colors. It's almost like you're kind of rubbing out everything you've worked hard on. But also this technique just with the palette knife kind of looks cool as well. So if you're into it, feel free to leave it. And now I'm just going to blend in that white layer at the top. And that's where you'll see the blending the most. Now just before I scrape, I want to go round the top one last time in order to get those sharp corners and get the top as flat as possible. Now I can go and scrape around the cake. With my scraper, very gently smooth out that surface and hopefully you'll start to get the ombre effect with a smoother surface. Now it's really important to not move the scraper too much, mainly because if you do want to go around and fill in gaps, obviously you've got loads of different shades of purple, but you can use what is on the scraper because that has every shade. So I'll go around a few times. You've got quite a thick layer on here, so it's okay to scrape off but I won't get rid of the excess buttercream just yet. So that is looking really, really nice. There are a couple of holes, so what I'm going to do is line up my scraper and kind of guess which shade is which. So that center bit is what I'm going to use to spread on the cake. And a little bit of white on the top, and now I can scrape again. Only once you're done and you're happy with the sides can you now scrape all this excess off. 
So it is a trickier technique because there's more room for errors, especially if you want to go in and fill any holes. But this has worked really well. You will get some sort of line and separation between the colours, but it's nowhere near as obvious as if you would have left it and not blended the um, colours together. So I'm just going to clean off the top of this. One motion from the outside in and scrape off. So there is the ombre effect. I'm going to pop this in the fridge while I make the decoration on the top. And of course you can decorate the cake however you like, but I'm gonna go with one of my favorite decorations at the moment, which is an isomalt sail. Cause I think it looks really cool with the ombre effect cause it's got different shades within the sail itself. So for my ice melt sale, you may have already seen my YouTube video that I uploaded a few weeks ago. It's a lot more detailed than this will be, but I've got my ready melted ice melt in here. I've left it uncolored because I'm going to color it now. I've got my bottle ready to sculpt this mat over and some pegs to secure the mat as well. So it's nice and loose in here. Now what I'm going to do is actually add a couple of drops of purple and blue just to kind of marble the isomalt a little bit. So in with the purple and the same with the blue, just a couple of drops. And rather than mix this through, which I usually would, I'm actually going to take this off and just swirl the pan around because I don't want to fully mix the colour in just yet. And then go onto the mat. can actually see a really nice marbling effect in the bottom of the pan. So hopefully it will look a little bit like that on the sail as well. So as usual, I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. So as you spread it out, it will blend together a little bit more. And now it's ready to mold over the bottle. Center it as much as possible. And now clamp it in place. So I've got some nice drips forming here. I'm going to leave this for a good five minutes for it to set and then finish off the cake. Okay, so I've left the sail setting so it's nice and solid. I'm going to carefully unmold it, which has always been nerve wracking bit. Let's take off the pegs. Now hopefully you can see it as well as I can, but the marbling effect looks amazing. There are these like crazy streaks of purple and blue. It looks so effective and the shape as well. So it's an amazing topper to put on top of a cake. So I'm just going to put a little bit of buttercream just to secure it. And this is the leftover buttercream that I had from scraping around the cake. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> So now I'm just going to go around with a few rosettes of buttercream as added decoration. And I've got a few meringue kisses which I've also coloured with purple and blue just to tie in with this theme. These smaller decorations as well help keep the top isomalt sail stable. So even though it is stable with the buttercream, if you've made it one side heavy, for example, you can always balance it on the meringue kisses that you dot around the cake. There's always ways around things. And there you go. So a two-in-one tutorial for you, ombre buttercream and a marbled isomalt sail. So even if you have made ombre buttercream before and you're finding the process a little bit more difficult, try this technique out. You do need to replace the buttercream every now and then, but I think it's the best way to get this gradual difference in shading. It's super effective. You can obviously do it in any color and decorate the cake however you like. I'm looking forward to seeing your creations. So if you do try it out, please tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And in the meantime, we'll see you soon with lots more tutorials on the way.